make your own foam inserts for camera equipment storage using the Flex Foam at 10 Expanding Flexible Foam. Now in today's project, I'm gonna show you one way of creating custom flexible foam inserts for all types of drawers and cabinets for any type of uh, sensitive electronics and camera equipment. Now there's a couple of uh, pros and cons to using uh, flexible foams to make your custom inserts like this. Uh, of course you can buy your foam sheets and cut out any insert that you want, but those foam sheets um, are not very durable. They come in open cell structures and you don't have much of a choice for densities, whereby if you're casting with liquid foams, you can uh, choose your own uh, foam density, you can pigment the foams, they're closed cell structure, a lot more durable, and of course, you can customize to any shape and design that you wanna make the insert for. Now, in this case, we're gonna make two inserts that are specifically for the camera equipment that we use here at the studio. Now, the first step would be to actually take some measurements off the equipment that you want to house. And I'm just going to loosely write some numbers down that I can uh, base my uh, inserts I'm going to be making for this uh, uh, custom box, so to say. And for these inserts, I'm going to be using a cardboard tube for the round pieces and some uh, wood blocks for the uh, square pieces. I'm going to cut these to the sizes that we noted earlier and then I'm going to proceed to seal it uh, using some sanding sealer. And I'm going to apply at least two coats of this to seal the wood pattern so it doesn't show up on our casting. The cardboard two pieces that we cut up to use as space holders for our casting are also going to get sealed with the same sanding sealer. So once all these um, inserts have dried, we can proceed to attach them to a board. I do need some oil-based clay. And as you can see here, I have a bin that says urethane only. And what that means is that the clay inside this bin has been in contact with urethane products previously. And we wanna keep it as such so that we don't cause any kind of cross-contamination. Keep in mind that uh, the oil-based clays are reusable and you want to keep using them as long as possible. Once the blocks are glued down with some hot melt glue, I'm going to run a bead of that clay around these blocks for two reasons. Uh, first, I'm going to hinder any of the foam making its way underneath that block. And secondly, it's going to leave a nice smooth edge on my final casting. So before we move on to the next step of our project, it's really important that we uh, put a release agent down on our pattern. And because we're using urethane foam, we're gonna use a uh, release agent that's specifically developed for this type of material. This is Ease Release 2831. And uh, we're gonna apply two layers off the material to the entire pattern and allow it to uh, dry for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Make sure that you don't allow this material to pull up in sections of your mold box because it will influence the way that uh, the final pattern is going to look. Um, it's really uh, important to understand and know that uh, not every release agent is the same and choosing the wrong release agent for this application can actually cause your uh, casting material to collapse on itself. So make sure that you use the correct release agent when dealing with uh, urethane foams. The release agent is allowed now to flash off for about 20-30 minutes before proceeding on to the next step. Now to construct the actual mold box, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some melamine board and I already pre-measured these out and I'm cutting them to the right sizes that I need. Now, in order to get a really nice finish on our casting, it uh, is important to use a back pressure plate and that's what we're making here. Now, what is back pressure? Back pressure is basically the pressure that's created when the expanding foam inside your mold box hits the pressure plate and then starts to push that pressure back into the mold, creating a much better surface finish on our casting. 
Now, the way to achieve a good back pressure from a back pressure plate is to have the uh, vent holes on the pressure plate uh, located very conveniently in the right size so that the foam can expand fully uh, give enough pressure to the uh, front, the face of our casting, yet won't uh, build up too much pressure inside the mold box where the mold box itself could actually distort or break. Now the basic formula for placing of the vents uh, will depend on the size of the mold, but usually it's best to place the vents along the edges of the mold where they gonna make sure that the casting inside the mold box has uh, fully filled with material. Now, fewer vents allow more back pressure and a better finish on the parts, but again, keep in mind that there is that uh, possibility of the pressure um, breaking the mold box. So you may need to adjust your vent placement and uh, vent quantity. So now that the mold box has been constructed, we can uh, place the pattern, our pattern, down into the box and then we're going to secure it using some screws. You want to add enough screws so that the pressure from the foam does not distort or even break your mold box. So um, rule of thumb here is about every two to three inches I like to put screw. And uh, of course I pre-drill these holes because this is a melamine board and um, these are particle boards and they will uh, easily strip and uh, bow and crack. So pre-drill anytime that you're using uh, such laminated materials as particle boards. Now before we start mixing our material, it is very important that you put a layer of the uh, East Release 2831 over any surfaces that the foam will be touching and you don't want it to stick to. That includes the vent holes. That's where the foam is uh, specifically going to get uh, soaked in and stuck in. So it's very important to release any surface where the foam is going to be in contact with. Now for this project, we decided to use the Flex Foam at 10. This is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, uh, polyurethane expanding foam. It has a self-skinning and closed cell feature, which allows us to cast uh, really nice finishes to our projects. And you'll see with the addition of back pressure, the actual face of our casting is going to come out nice and smooth and is not going to have any void or open cells. Now this particular foam expands about six times its original volume. If you ever wonder how much material uh, a mold box like this is going to take, there's actually a really easy way to find out. You don't have to just guess and pour and uh, you can top off the product afterwards, surely. But there is a material conversion calculator on our website uh, that's going to help you determine how much product is needed uh, for you to fill up a specific void. So if you haven't used that tool yet, I recommend checking it out. Uh, you can do all kinds of uh, casting, brush on, um, all kinds of different application and uh, all kinds of different materials that we have uh, are available in that chart to help you out determine how much material you're gonna need for a specific project. Now, before you start actually mixing the product, it's important to actually lay out the tools that we're going to be using for this project. And uh, as you can see here, I have actually two drills. One has the turbine mixer and the other one has the uh, screw attachment on it. That way I don't have to switch back and forth between the attachments um, when I'm working with a very short pot life material like the flex foam. It's really important that we pre-mix the two components separately before combining them together. The part A and part B should be mixed thoroughly before it's uh, dispensed out of the original containers. And this should be done every time before you go to use the product. It doesn't matter if you mixed it an hour ago and then set it aside. You want to give it a quick mix one more time before you actually go to use it. So because this is a by volume dispense ratio, I'm gonna simply dispense the part B first. 
The Flex Foam at 10 is uh, naturally a bright white color, and to get away from that bright and screaming color, I'm going to add a little bit of the So Strong Black to our Part B of the uh, flexible foam. I'm going to stir that in and allow the uh, black pigment to fight that uh, initial white um, color of the material. So when we cast it, it will turn into a nice soft gray. So now that we're combined all the Part Bs into our uh, five gallon mixing container, I can go ahead and dispense the Part A. The real trick comes now. Once you combine the part A and part B together, you don't have much time. You wanna have all the tools you need ready to go. The benefit of using a turbine mixer like this is the fact that you um, can work fast since you don't have much time with this product. Uh, you can uh, mix a much more thorough, so the combining of the part A and part B is going to be much better, which gives us a much better uh, surface finish. And of course, the air that you're whipping into the foam is going to give the foam a much better rise than if you just mix by hand. The uh, expanding foams, you actually want to whip in as much air as possible into them to give you a much better rise. And uh, a turbine mixer like this is going to allow us to do just that. So from the time that we pour the two components, uh, we have about 15 to 20 seconds to mix them thoroughly. The foam will start expanding. Uh, even if you're still working it, it will start expanding and you're going to have a mess on your hand if you don't act fast. So a turbine mixer like this is going to do a really good job of combining the parts A and B together. Now, when you're finished with the mixing off the turbine mixer, you're going to still go back in and scrape the side off the mixing container uh, with a flat edge uh, mixing tool. So mix it, get it into your box, into your mold box, and here you can see that I poured it over the... Uh, blocks themselves to kind of give it a nice first coating and then let the foam rise uh, inside on its own. And uh, here you can see I'm just going to go around and tighten all the screws down. Again, this might be a little bit overkill on the screws, but I'd rather be sure that the pressure inside that uh, box is not going to actually break the box open. So now while we're waiting for the foam to expand, we're going to take a couple seconds to clean that mechanical mixer using some denatured alcohol. This is the best time to clean your tools while the material is still liquid and fresh. When it starts to actually um, expand and harden, you're going to have a really tough time cleaning that off. So a little bit of uh, precaution here goes a long way to keeping your tools clean. So now that the mixture is clean, we can uh, devote ourselves to watching the uh, foam rise. And you can see here, after its initial pot life, which is only about 50 seconds, so within a minute, you're going to see that foam rising, and uh, it's going to start to rise above and out of your mold box if you have enough material in there. The foam is allowed now a full cure for two hours before the molding. After the two hours, any of the extra foam that came out of our venting holes can simply be cut away and then the entire mold box can be taken apart to demold our actual casting. You want to demold these slowly as not to rip the actual foam. And voila, here it is. You can see that the actual face of our casting looks really nice. The uh, cell structure of the foam is very uniform, very even. Now remember, you can see around that hole up top uh, that the uh, edges are very soft and that's where that clay came in that I put around the edges of the blocks as I was preparing the, uh, the pattern. All right, so now that we've demolded the uh, foam out of our mold box, uh, we still have some of the uh, residue of the release agent and some of the clay that actually transferred onto the foam. And to remove that, uh, we're gonna use some naphtha. Uh, it's gonna remove any kind of uh, grease and release agent that was left on the foam and won't damage the actual foam itself. Um, the last thing you want to be doing is be transferring these release agents and oil 
um, clays onto your sensitive uh, camera equipment. So to prevent this, a uh, cleaning is strongly recommended. So now after the foam inserts have been uh, cleaned, uh, they can be inserted into the places that they were made for. In this case, it's this cabinet here. And as you can see, all the equipment fits snug and perfectly into the places that it was made for. Now, if you got inspired by this project and you would like to purchase some materials to make your own, you can do so by visiting any one of our distributors around the world. So there you have a simple and easy way to make your very own custom flexible foam inserts for a variety of applications using our flexible foam system. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Now to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos, remember to subscribe.